let's have a look at my prototype power system. So what, in essence, we're trying to do is we're taking this wind generator. So here's the charge controller for the wind generator, which is designed to charge a 12 volt battery. So here we have an AGM 9 amp hour in our prototype. Uh, I've got a 400 amp hour lithium ion phosphate on order. Hopefully that will get here sometime this year. And the idea is to take that charged power and give it to our household grid tie inverter via these PV cables. Now why would you want to do that? Various reasons. One is that there's no way you're going to get a small wind charger like that to be able to charge a BYD um, high voltage battery. So just, there's not enough EMF there to, to push it through. So, so it would never ever charge it. So what we want is an intermediary and ideally the, the inverter that you, that's already on your grid tie can accept a wide range of voltages coming from the PV line and it's got very clever smarts in there in the MPPT controller to track those voltages. Now, in our case, we're actually going to give it a constant voltage. So um, there are settings you can change in those uh, grid tie inverters that, um, that will be able to get a better optimization. So the key problem is that those grid ties, they are wanting 300 plus volts uh, to, to get uh, optimum. Um, they'll work at a minimum, some of them down to 65 volts, um, others up to, uh, you know, minimum is kind of 80. So this device, its job is to accept charge from the wind controller, store that in some kind of battery. So at the moment here in our prototype, we've got a nine amp hour AGM. Um, now, so that's connected with and we haven't got that much current coming through there, so they're kind of connected with a low um, low voltage leads. Uh, but we start to ramp up our leads from here. So we've got a dual 12 gauge here that'll bring us down to about nine gauge um, US standard. Um, so that's around up the four to six millimeters paired. And that should get you around the 40 amp um, limit. Uh, which is kind of good because we, we don't want to go too much more on this uh, device than, than, than that anyway. Um, the other advantage is we can use low-tech um, and cheap uh, battery chargers. So here we have an um, auto-style battery charger. And on this particular battery, you see we have a 2-amp setting. Ooh, if I can just get you close enough there. Let's see. Yep. So we've got two amp, and in fact, that's the max charge limit for an AGM nine amp hour anyway. Uh, we can also go to six amp if we get larger batteries. Now I do have um, 400 amp hour lithium ion phosphate um, battery on order. <laughs> Good luck getting that from China. Oh, maybe it'll come this year, maybe. Uh, okay, so that's our charger there. Um, and you can see that's feeding in to uh, what, what I'm calling the, uh, the charge side of the of device and we actually have an isolator switch because on this side on the other end of the isolator switch we have a what i'm calling the outside uh although not strictly true because i've mucked it up a little bit down here but um so on that uh on this one we have uh a again small auto style um inverter um, that will accept 12 volt and turn that into 240. Um, so in Australia, of course, we have 240 volts. So um, what we will be doing is once we've got the wind turbine up and going, we should be able to plug it up. Oh, well, well, we get the polarity right anyway. Um, we, we'll try, plug, plug that in there. And so what we'll have is uh, two input sources. We'll have the wind and depending on how you want to use it, you will also have the option of using a battery charger. So on days where there's no wind, for example, and you have lots of excess solar, then there's no problem, no point, no reason why you couldn't charge off the solar during the day and save any that small amount of storage that you've got there for, for overnight. The big advantage, of course, of wind is that you 
at night you get wind, but you don't get sunlight at night. So let's run through the quick specs. So coming in, we have on the on the left hand side we have the this homemade uh, terminal here uh, for the positive side, and we have in parallel we have the inverter, we have the wind charger, and we also have the DC battery charger. So all in parallel. And coming off that, we actually have the main key component of the system, which is a boost controller, boost charger. So what we do is we turn our 12 volts into 90 volts, but at highly, fairly high current. So we've got um, coming out of here, um, we've got an isolator switch for that. Uh, so we can turn the booster on or off. Yeah, we haven't done the automation yet, but we can go uh, switch on manually. And that will give us, at this end, we'll be drawing around the maximum. Again, we've got um, 12 gauge by two, which should give us about nine gauge, um, and supporting maybe up to 40 amps. You probably want to be on the lower side of 40 amps um, for that. And again, because these, um, these wi the wiring on these devices is actually pretty small, I'll see if I can get in and show you. Um, there is a copper bus bar coming off there instead of trying to wire heavy gauge wire onto that small connector. So, and we also have a bit of safety a separator there to make sure that we don't accidentally short out those very closely associated terminals. So we'll be coming in here at around 40 amps and going out of here at 90, vol uh, 90 volts and around the five to six amps do to our PV. So that will give us between 450 and 500 watts on the PV line. So theoretically, uh, we should be able to uh, boost our 12 volt battery source up to 90 volts and make it usable, if not particularly efficient, um, on the grid tie inverter, which will if there's wind, accept electricity from the wind generator, put it into the grid tie inverter, uh, which will assist somewhat with the uh, if you have um, if you have a battery bank. Um, otherwise, at night you'll get maybe uh, 400 volts. So that's a bit of experimental part of the project. Um, we're not really sure how well that'll do. Depends on the MPPT settings inside the inverter, but you should get some level of decent efficiency. If you get anything more than zero, I suppose that's a, bon a bonus. Okay, we'll just keep going a bit further on here. We've got a few um, things for the automation at a later point. So on the, like what I'm calling the other side, uh, we have the negative terminal there and we'll see we've got a 50 amp, uh, 25 mil, uh, milliamp hour um, shunt there. So we'll be able to monitor current on this side. Um, again, the, the automation project is still underway and uh, still haven't got all the parts uh, Although I've got quite a few. So we're going to monitor the current on this side. We're going to monitor the voltage on this side. There also is a um, battery monitor, and this is key to this, how the system works, a battery monitor, uh, which whether we can do that inside the Arduino uh, later on, uh, is not that important. But um, so what we're going to do is um, let the battery run down to, uh, to its uh, minimum voltage and have the battery monitor cut off the booster supply then switch over to uh so that'll switch over to the charge cycle so whether the solar whether the wind is connected or the battery charger is connected doesn't really matter um so that will charge the battery back up and the battery monitor will not allow any the, allow the booster to come back on again until we reach um some kind of peak um at, at the upper end just below the float on a lithium um lithium ion phosphate. So uh, once that comes back on, of course, then we can do a model, uh, we can do another cycle. So, so long as if the wind is blowing well, then what that might mean is overnight, you will have a, um, you, you'll have a, quite a few cycles on the battery. So that may not be ideal, depending on <laughs> the quality of your battery. Uh, so we should uh, cycle, depending, dep if you get solid wind, um, frequently, then you might have to consider a, a bigger, much bigger battery. This one is really, again, experimental for the prototype. I've got 400 um, amp hour battery um, lithium ion phosphate coming. So 400 amp hour should cope with, uh, you know, at 200, uh, again, uh, these 
these wind generators here, even though the generator itself is rated at 1.2 kilowatts, um, this controller here, if you just see very simply, you can see the, um, if we look just purely at the, at the current there, at, at 12 volts, we, we're outputting 16 amps, okay? So 16 times 12 is under 200. So we've got, only, the max we can get out of this charge controller is 200 watts. Um, and so we'll be charging a 400 amp hour battery on 200 watts, so that's not gonna cycle very often. Um, the alternative is, of course, that um, uh, when we get the automation here all in, we'll choose whether or not to turn the um, solar, well, I'm calling it solar, but it's the battery charger that'll run off electricity, which during the day, assuming that is uh, coming from the solar. Um, again, we, we I, I do actually have on order a, a photovoltaic sensor. So uh, theoretically what can happen is the both the uh, internal battery charge, sorry, the, the wind controller and the battery charger could be connected and then controlled by a relay. Um, so the battery charger could be controlled by the, um, by the automation logic to say, if it is daytime and we're getting no wind, then there's no reason why you shouldn't charge the battery off the solar, the excess solar. Assuming you've got excess solar. If you haven't got excess solar, then there's no, there's no advantage. Now, at our, at our property, we actually have 25 Jinko 300 watt uh, solar panels, and uh, that gives us eight, around eight kilowatt. And uh, next, oh, actually tomorrow, we'll be getting, to, tomorrow we'll be getting uh, 10 more uh, 480 watt solar panels and, um, and uh, 16 kilowatt hours of battery storage. Um, overnight, we have generated, we'll, we'll be using um, somewhere around eight kilowatt hours. There may be enough to get through the night, um, but on a, on a slow day, there won't be. So the wind is really experimental. It, it um, would just provide essentially trickle uh, so we're putting 200 watts in. Uh, if it's if it's going at full belt, which I doubt. Um, now uh, these are the turbine blades. Now you see that they're cup design. Although they have experimentally changed the shape and whatever, try to get to minimise the drag. But the problem with cup design is that when you when you're going away from the wind, it catches the wind on this side and goes away from the wind. But unfortunately, that means it drags on this side. So these have an upper limit, which is again why they've got a 200 watt um, in 200 watt charge controller here, but a 1.2 kilowatt generator. Um, so uh, the idea is that when we are in this process, this is the mold for my, for my wing. And if you look at this, this is an aerodynamic wing. So that's close to the optimal design, a little bit shallow. Um, and the idea is that you take simple materials. Here is PVC pipe. And if we have a look on here, if we put it that way, you can see I've molded that to the shape of the wing. And then we just have a glance over here and we have these <laughs> two meter length PVC pipes, which we will mold to the shape of this wing. So um, it, again, we're going to be experimental here. We've got a 1.2 kilowatt generator and we're going from this to this. If you get the idea. Um, so with the same generator, we will be able to generate, um, well, let's say significantly more power uh, <laughs> with those controllers. Uh, say hello to Yoda. Um, it's on. Yoda, why are you on the saw? Are you on the table saw? What are you on the table saw for? You get kisses? Good boy. Um, 
Yeah, so we're going from this size blades to two times this size blade. Let's see if we can get a comparison here. So this is half the blade. So this will actually be two of those compared with this. So, uh, and we should be able to generate somewhere close to the generator's maximum then. I, I actually need to, well, again, experimentally to find out what the, the optimal here is.